Macarena just released Tier 9 in the Gear Hub with the first Mac Seeker. Seeker is a legendary attacker that is medium mech, so it maxes out at 24 energy. The HP is uh, not great, it's less than Hemlocks, so it is fairly weak. Uh, speed of 22 kph, so it is the fastest attacker tied with Stalker. The ability is something that is very interesting, it's like a teleport. Warp teleports you to an enemy within range. While teleporting, you can't take damage, so basically during the teleport animation you are invincible, which is nice. Uh, that's not true of uh, Redeemer, so that's a step up from there. On arrival, the Seeker will activate a personal shield. The shield is 34,000, that is marginally better than a Juggernaut shield, so it's very weak, and deal bonus damage. The bonus damage is plus 30%, so it's actually less than Stalker and Brickhouse, though there is an implant to add another 30%, so you can get up to 60% bonus damage, which is very nice, for a short time before being teleported back. Right. Okay. So, ability cooldown, 8 seconds. It's actually very short. The ability duration is 7 seconds, but... The warp duration is one second. Uh, now the wording of this makes it sound like you will teleport there and then you'll be there for one second and then you'll teleport back, but that is not the case. This is the time that it takes to teleport. It's like the teleport animation time, essentially. So one second to teleport there, five seconds for being there, and then one second to teleport back for the full seven second duration. Now, of course, there's a lot of questions tied to this mech. I already have a lot of things on my list to test, and I'm going to do that as soon as I can. So let me know all of the questions that you have, and I'm actually going to try to make a separate video covering all of those um, different questions. All of the tests that I can think of regarding this mech and all of the different things that it might have. But for now, we are going to be trying this mech with several different weapons. I have ability cooldown on here, as well as the other three major storm rack implants. Ability duration does not appear to apply to Seeker, but that's all well and good, because a longer duration would actually do you <laughs> a lot of harm. I think if the duration were shorter, you'd actually be better off. But an interesting note, the four Seeker implants, we got warp range, that's going to be very good. The range is 100 meters, which is actually fairly close, and I think this range is going to really, really help you if you are uh, using Seeker a lot with a specific weapon, so that's going to be nice. The shield HP plus 50% at max, so that brings you from 34,000, which is roughly Juggernaut shield durability at max, to 51,000, which is a little bit less than Sentinels. It's still not going to be very high. Uh, in fact, even the 60,000 Bastion shield HP goes down very quickly. So I wouldn't recommend this implant, for being honest. This one is interesting because it is a Seeker Warp cooldown. Now, there has never been a mech-specific cooldown implant in the game up until now. Now, the same thing applies to the damage implants on every single mech that deals ability damage. It, the the mech-specific implant does the same as just the arbitrary regular implant, so never, ever, ever use this. If you get it, just scrap it, because it is just going to hold you down if you ever try to use that pilot and weapon on anything else. So, yeah. Pointless, but it is interesting. Secret bonus damage, of course, as I mentioned before, plus 30% at max, so you can get yourself up to uh, additional 60% damage, which is very nice. In fact, I'm going to use this <laughs> implant instead of the cooldown because it might be the most important implant to ensure that you get the kills that you go for. Alright, so on Elon Station, 
This is, wow, very unfortunate. Hold, please. So this is my first time using Seeker maxed out. I think I should mention. I don't think I want to teleport to that guy. The really interesting thing with this is that you can very easily get absolutely sh destroyed just by teleporting to the wrong enemy. Because again, shield's not very strong. But you did see, uh, presumably, that I teleported there, stayed there for like five seconds, teleported back. There is a little lock-on animation. Yeah, look at that. Very nice. Super fancy. I'm loving this thing already. Uh, but yeah, there's a little lock-on animation that is specific to, uh, to Seeker. Same with all of the mechs that have a little lock-on thing. Oh, I'm gonna die if I... <laughs> there we go. Um, this one appears to take the longest of all of the mechs. I think the, uh, there's like Scorpius, Orion, and Hemlock that all have their own little unique targeting systems. But this one appears to take the longest to lock on out of all of those mechs. Uh, upward of like two full seconds, actually. Now it's really nice. Oh, there's two of them. Oh no. <laughs> oh, I'm dead. What I really like about this mech is that the duration is just short enough to where you couldn't effectively capture a beacon with it. Uh, pretty much no matter how hard you try. Now, it is going to be kind of a camper mech, but it in itself is an anti-camper mech. So it's an interesting situation that we got there. Uh, let's teleport to this guy. I have Railgun as well as the Teleport Range. Very nice. Uh, my assumption, my prediction here, is that it will be yet another Railgun platform. Railgun being the most effective close-range weapon, which really irritates me, by the way. Uh, if, it's, <laughs> if it wasn't already known... I, I am very upset that Railgun is a better close-range weapon than especially Repeater. So that's annoying. Something like Ember Gun might also be incredibly effective. You couldn't really use this thing with EM rifles, I don't think. Let's... oops. Well. So yeah, if I'm being honest, I think this is going to be another Railgun platform. Are people going to use it in favor of uh, any other popular railgun mechs like Surge? I mean, maybe not. Oh no. Hold, please. So it might be something that people use uh, like Ember Gun on. But then again, Nomad's a popular Ember Gun mech. So it's a very interesting situation that you got. Would I say that someone would give up their Surge to run Seeker? Probably not. In fact, Surge would be a good, a good counter to Seeker. Um, just being able to EMP something right off the bat. Bastion as well. Uh, Bastion more so. Because you can't even... You can't teleport to a Bastion and steal damage to it without popping its shield and... Uh, and EMPing yourself. <laughs> so you have to be very careful with who you teleport to and when. It is true that you get a little bonus damage and a shield just by teleporting, so that's always nice. But then you gotta be careful not to teleport back into something that's too dangerous. So uh, it's all just a lot of uh, caution that needs to be used. Frankly, all in all, I really like this mech. Now, I am not. <laughs> you know, it, it's absurd to me because some people have like claimed, oh, you know, because you're because you're saying that you like this thing, it must mean that Plarium's paying you or something to <laughs> to say this. It's like, no, they don't they don't need to pay me to say positive things. I wouldn't be playing this game. I would not be playing this game if I didn't have positive things to say about it. Now for all of the things that I do like about this mech. I think there's a few things that I have some misgivings about. 
I think the cooldown is a little bit too short. If you were to add an ability to cooldown implant, I think two of these could very effectively just constantly harass someone. Which is annoying. I can't <laughs> I can't capture that beacon. There is a part of me that's irritated by the fact that I can't capture a beacon. But ultimately I I enjoy that. Uh, I think it would be really bad if you had enough time to cap a beacon with a seeker, because that would make it essentially a scout, right? And we don't need another legendary scout. Uh, frankly, we don't need another legendary attacker either, but I'm glad that it's an attacker is all I'm trying to say. Uh, I can kind of just like <laughs> tap that beacon just to get the bots being like, wait, what's going on? You could be really annoying with this thing. I think it is, yet again, going to be very weak against the classic meta, uh, which is, well, the classic counter meta being Surge, Nomad, and Bastion, as well as, like, Guardian, right? Eclipse, you can't even lock on to, you see? So I can't teleport to an Eclipse. And so all of those uh, counter mechs, now, like, the main meta, of course, is Aegis, right? But that is not the counter meta, that's the main meta. And then anything else, well, like Surge, Nomad, Bastion, all that stuff is uh, to support the Aegis, to counter the Aegis. And pretty much you get the same thing here, where it's kind of the same thing. It's still weak to the same things that everything's weak against. Which is sort of annoying, but at the same time, this could be the perfect Aegis counter that we've all been waiting for. Like, look at how much damage that I just immediately deal. I've got the damage implant on here, i got the range implant on here. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's the perfect assassin. Come on, can I... Oh, I got it white. Hey, okay, so you do have just enough time to get it white. That's interesting. I like that. That means if you're very, very careful, you can get a beacon white. You're not going to be able to cap it, but, like, capping beacons is not your primary role. So I'm okay with that, frankly. In terms of the design, I think it is very interesting. Uh, clearly inspired by Biblically Accurate Angels. I think it's cool, but to be honest, we just had a floating mech released being Vortex. And even though I do not have anything against floating mechs, I do prefer I do for, prefer mechs with legs, just because that that's just what I think of when I think of a mech. So it's a little bit disappointing that this uh, is, is a, another floater, because they're not quite as interesting as, as one mechs with legs, but still. Uh, that's really the only gripe that I have about the design. The weapons are very far out as well as that, so I'm not really sure what the hitbox looks like. I have to test that. But as far as things go, I think it will be a nice addition to the game. It'll be very interesting, it'll be very fun. Uh, I'm excited to max this thing out, like literally the moment that it releases the game. I've been saving up my acorns in in preparation for a new mech. Ooh, nice. Might be like one of the only mechs that are good with repeater hay. It's hard to say whether I think it'll be uh, meta or not. Probably it'll make its way into like the top 10. Probably not the top 5 though. Like I said, it's still weak to the same things. It might make a good Aegis counter, but we already have multiple good Aegis counters, and there's just, you know, uh, like Surge. In a, in a good team setup, you always got that Surge protecting the Aegis anyway. It's it's a lot more difficult than uh, it seems. Hey, nice. I got it white. Very nice. Yeah, you gotta make sure that you know where your enemy- Oh no, make sure that you know where enemies are before teleporting, because if you teleport to somebody and there's another guy nearby, that's not gonna do you a whole lot of good. Anyway, 
I will not be testing all 12 energy weapons on this mech in this video because as you may have noticed my railgun was using the wrong pilot. That's because I didn't have enough pilot marks on the test server to max out very many pilots. So I'm going to be trying a lot more weapons when it actually comes out uh, also on the test server as well. But yeah, apart from that, I think that will be it for me. Let me know what you all think about this mech. I think it'll be very interesting. Uh, as is typical, it is going to be a very effective mech, but it's not going to be a top meta breaking whatever thing, and I think that's for the better. I don't think anyone actually, for as, for as much as people complain, why are you showing footage of this thing? It's not like top five meta, oh my god, it's gross, like only give me EM rifle gameplay. Like, for as much as people like to say that, they would also complain if every single new release was top meta, and rightfully so. That's the way War Robots does it, and it has not. <laughs> and that's awful. Nobody likes that. So I think we can all agree that it's really nice for new releases to be effective variety, but not something that everyone needs to get if they want to be competitive. And I think that is where Seeker will be. But if you have other opinions uh, on that, please do let me know. Also, as well, don't forget to leave a comment with any questions that you have about this mech because I will be taking questions from the comments and uh, doing tests to find the answers for them. But yeah, with that out of the way, appreciate y'all. Take care.